Hey guys, I came in here early, so I'm not really ready. Um, hit the button by mistake. So we'll just be waiting a few minutes. You all can sit with me while I oil my machine. Um, let me pull you all up on my phone so I can see who all is here. <laughs> early. <laughs> So I can see the chat comments. You all are up close and personal for a minute. Great. So I call myself coming in here too <laughs> early so I can clean this machine that I haven't uh, cleaned the last couple of times I've sewed and hit the button by mistake. So forgive me guys. Do this real quick. Get some of the dirt out of here. <clears throat> I think I've sold about three times and haven't cleaned it or oiled it, so I haven't been doing a whole lot of sewing. A little short intervals here and there. Whenever I have a Zoom meeting, <laughs> Deborah Quilts is in here. Still finding little pieces of lint. <laughs> mm -hmm. I normally clean it when I change my bob and do a full cleaning along with oiling, but since I haven't done it in a while, I thought I might need to do both. my top. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> Hello everybody that's coming in. I'm just running. I can't I hit the button early by mistake, so I am not ready. I am here trying to oil and clean my machine here. Right here. Okay, that should work. Let me take my needle thread out. All right, just want to put a little bit more oil on here. All right. Get this bobbin back in. And then I'll get you all with the mic and put you all on the shelf. 
is in here Janice Miller Janice Miller Francis Jackson Darlene Crosby Vivian Calvey Laura Miller Mary's here Judy L Kevin the quilter <laughs> to my yay I can finally sew my friend Miss T is on evening all tea quilters uh, Brenda Foley is here good evening tea Kathy D's creative chaos says hello friends Nancy Gus is here saying hi all Lynette Williams saying hello everyone Debbie saying hi to you and everyone. Vivian, Vivian Calvi is reminding people to hit the thumbs up. Thank you, Miss Vivian. And Lynette Sirac says, hey, quilters, how everyone doing? Jason Lewis is here saying evening, friends. <laughs> um, hold on. Let me see who else. TNC Norton says hello, T and everyone. Susan T, hi, T and all T quilters. Lorraine M says hi, y'all. Hi, Lorraine. Welcome. Tiffany of Tiffany's Quilting Life. Hey, Tiffany. She says hi, T and friends. And I'm going to have to cut this uh, fan on medium. It's been on low for a while now. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, C Joy Creation says hi, T. Hi also to you and welcome to the channel. Let's see. Maddie Barnum's here. Says she got her package today. I love everything. What a nice way it was packaged and sent. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you for purchasing. Q Covington's here saying hi all. June Hansen, Beverly Aikens, Bonita Nance. <laughs> She's saying take your time, T. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I felt like I was rushing in once I hit that power button like seven minutes early. Yeah, about seven minutes early. Um... Phyllis G, going to be moving you guys back in a minute. Remo JS, just trying to get some of these shout outs out. Also reminding people to hit the thumbs up. Darlene Crosby, Damali J, <laughs> Judy Abernathy, and Shirley Peter saying good evening, everyone. Hey, Shirley, welcome. Crystal Lewis says hello. Hi, Crystal, welcome as well. June Hansen saying hi to you and everyone. Lisa Thompson saying hello, everyone. Um, TNC says we have our AC on. Light PC and all creates more heat. Oh, okay. So she's saying they got their AC on. I'm not that bad yet. Thank you, Kathy. She's also reminding people to hit the thumbs up. So what happens when I mess up and hit the button you all go for a ride so i'm gonna actually put my camera for a second just so people that get motion sickness don't have that <laughs> all right <laughs> and i probably have dirtied up the camera so let me i don't have anything in here to wipe it with other than like a cloth so I'm just gonna wipe it because I put my fingerprints over the camera clean you all off <laughs> yeah I know some people don't like moving cameras um sorry about that guys and hopefully mics are working so Thanks. Okay, T, we love watching you get set up. Got my new haul tonight. Awesome. <laughs> I have, uh, I did not cut any more. I cut 18 take five kits. The other 18, I'll start back cutting next week. I just needed a break from that because I'm doing all the pressing and the, well, I did all the prep work for it, all the pressing, then all the cutting. And then all the sorting and all the packaging all by myself. So I just wanted to um, not burn myself out on it. It wasn't that I was like absolutely tired of it. 
but I was like, I'll go ahead and I've been cutting fat eights uh, and getting those. I've got all of those packaged up from some of the leftover fabrics from uh, the bento box kit and stuff like that. So I've been also people had placed some fabric orders from Wednesday's video. Uh, I completely forgot that Wednesday was the first Wednesday of the month. So we'll just do birthday shout outs next Wednesday. Um, hopefully I don't forget. I realized that while I was taking a shower right before the live tonight, didn't even think about it on Wednesday. So sorry guys who have March birthdays. We'll come back and take care of it later. Sandra Agger is here. Uh, saying, uh, hey there, T. Edda's. Greetings from California. Uh, Bonita says she's sewing binding onto a quilt, so that's awesome feeling when you're getting to the bottom of the of the last task of a quilt. <laughs> Melissa says there's that view I know and love. Yeah, it was, it's kind of up close and personal because I actually I was trying to move the camera, and where I moved the camera, it went live. I'm like, okay, here we go again. <laughs> Thank you, Darlene. Let me know that the uh, volume is okay. Uh. <laughs> and Crystal says, thanks for the little ride tonight, T. Yep. It's, it's, I know it's bad for some people, so. Okay, thanks, C. Rex. Everybody on the mic checks. Appreciate that. Because otherwise, I don't know. Hi, Jonah Crutchfield. She's here. Claudette Bettis is here. Maria Mayer says, hi, Miss T and everyone. Hey, Maria. My brother is here. Hi, sis and everyone. Stay safe. You got my thumbs up. Well, thank you, sir. And hi to my mom as well. I was talking to her today, and uh, she said she was going to be here. So, hi, mom. June says she got her client's quilt done, so she's resting. And Vicki is here saying good evening as well. Sandra says, I finally started the K-Facet kit from T. I received all the African kits and fabric. So, yes. So, she's got all of her stuff lined up, ready to go. I still need to, I stopped at borders because I didn't have enough fabric to put borders on my K Facet quilt. So, I've never finished my quilt top myself. So, I need to finish that off. Um. And Kevin's saying hello as well to my mom. <laughs> and Beverly Aikens as well. So thank you guys. Okay. So. I got a couple things I'm hoping to get done tonight. I, um, I have my uh, Brightly quilt. I have the rose. The block sold into rows, but now I need to sew those rows together. And then I also have the take, no, the four-star general. I was going to say the take five. The four-star general I have cut out in the red, white, black, and gray quilt so I can do the regular blocks. And I still have not cut out border blocks or anything like that for the last two months. So I got to do some border blocks. I also need to plan how big I'm going to make this red, white, and gray one because I think it's going to be super long with me increasing the block size. So I need to make sure it's not going to be too long. <laughs> Let's see. Michelle R is here saying hi from Oklahoma. Hi, Michelle. Welcome. Hey, Mama Lucy. <laughs> from Kevin. <laughs> Uh, Vivian Calvi says, thank you, T. You are welcome. Thank you. And uh, I'm still working on scrap bags. Uh, if you ordered a scrap bag and you haven't heard from me, I've sent out some scrap bags if you had other orders. Um, or in the order that I received them. I, and if you were somebody that I got to send a Take 5 kit to next week or a Bento Box kit ne to next week. I got your bag put aside, so don't worry. Your bag is there. It's just that um, I'm trying to create the bags. I'm trying to create the Fat H scrap bags, 
and so i'm trying to make sure i keep everything straight so i've got some bags set up that i haven't even billed for yet so i probably will hopefully do some billing tomorrow we shall see <laughs> um we shall see how that goes and i'll be getting your stuff to you in the mail as well so it's coming Thank you, Darlene Crosby. She's thanking, welcoming everybody that's joining. Please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and ring the bell to receive notifications. And thank you. Also, I do have a Facebook group, T Quilts LLC. If you'd like to join that, make sure you answer the three questions when you go over there. It just makes it a lot easier for you to get in. Um, so I know you're not, somebody hasn't hijacked your account. So let's see. And Tiffany is also posting the same thing for the Facebook group. So thank you, Tiffany. To none you, Robert, saying evening all. Hoping I haven't missed anybody. Sheila Willis is here saying good evening, everyone. And T, Sue GSD, are you ready for it? 101 days until retreat. Yes. Uh, Darcy says right now in Coon Rapids, we have freezing rain. Oh, my goodness. And Beverly saying, yes, I paid my invoice. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, I think Beverly, I think I noticed you had paid after I had done my post office run today. So I'll be, I might, sometimes I go to my post office on Sunday. So it just depends on how many orders I got. I might do a Sunday drop or I'll wait till Monday. So I do, I did see that you had paid. Also, I saw Melissa sent something through Cash App. Uh, while I was getting set up. So I've been getting set up. So if you send me emails or money, stuff like that, uh, I'll be checking all into that probably tomorrow or if I can't sleep, middle of the night. <laughs> Leisha Moe is here saying hi to and all quilting friends. Uh, Janet Macro says good evening, T and T quilters. Hey, Janet. So... What we're going to do is uh, I got my pieces. I cut, I chain piece my entire quilt top together uh, this time just because I had all these special blocks and special places and I needed to make sure none of them move because remember I had some of my stars that are different colors. So I just cut them into two pieces so that I can chain piece these through. And I've already pressed the rows in the direction that I want my units to go. And so we're just gonna sew these rows together. So I got five of those to do. And then I'm hoping that I will have time to start working on some of these four star general blocks. I feel like I'm behind and that's, you know, it just is what it is when you are one person uh, running a whole business. So it is what it is sometimes. At least I'm still trying to <laughs> progress forward. That's all I can do. I don't know what. Oh, this is uh, packing tape off of a box, I guess, when I opened up stuff Wednesday. I'm like, what is that? I didn't have that. And I've been finding, um, it's weird. Um, I don't know how they produce this African fabric, but I've been finding like lint and strings and folds and stuff and it's like really crazy it's like i haven't opened this here so i know it's not my lint and threads <laughs> see who else has come in okay beverly she's just saying no problem whenever vanessa browns here says hi tnt quilters T, I got my Take 5 packet today. Yes. And I think they're going to be really pretty, as pretty as the first one. So, like I said, I got, I got about, I'm going to just guess and say maybe 10 fabrics out of the 30 were in the first kit. It could be a little bit more, but they're just different colorway. Oh, this machine is so nice and quiet when it's uh, oiled up. <laughs> It's like I had a few Zoom meetings, and it was like, instead of oiling the machine, I took that little hour to do some sewing. That's how I got these rows put together, thanks to a Zoom meeting. So, 
didn't take the time to oil. And now I'm ready for bed. All I got to do is put on my pajama shirt <laughs> when I leave out of here. Vanessa Brown's here. T, I got my Take 5 packet today, so that's awesome. I hope you all are enjoying them. Um, I don't even know. I, I might have one left. I think somebody canceled an order. So I might have one left. But I haven't even done any advertising for the Take 5 kits because the people who've been watching the videos have all gotten on the list. So I'm not going to have that many extras to sell. At some point, and I'm not sure when that's going to be because I'm going to be start work, starting to work on retreat stuff and I got lectures coming up. So uh, I'm trying to work on uh, quilt lectures right now. I think I got two. I got, y'all, I don't schedule two lectures I found out on one day. <laughs> one in the morning and one at seven at night. So, and they're uh, quite a good distance away. You know, I got to drive an hour or so to get to one. And the other one, I guess, is about 20 minute ride from home. So it's not as bad. I'm guessing about 20, maybe 30. So yeah, and then I need to make sure I'm not missing anything else, so. Hey, Lizette Zayas, she says, evening all. Thank you, Mary. Sandra says, gorgeous, oh, they're talking about the quilt top. Thank you, guys. From Darlene, Cynthia Shades here saying hello from Chicago. My nose is itching. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Darcy says, I finished the top and back of my Dr. Seuss quilt now. I just have to quilt it. That's pretty cool. Dee Dee Hansen here from Michigan. Hey, Dee Dee. Mailed your package today. Mailed Bonita's package. Mm, it was one other person. Mm. <laughs> that is crazy. Bonita, Dee Dee. It was somebody else. I can't even remember. Deborah Sims Brown is here saying hello, T. It's been a while since I joined the live. Well, welcome back. Hopefully, everything's been great for you. Uh, Remo is reminding people to hit that thumbs up. Says 50 people are watching. Oh, 50 thumbs up and 96 people watching. So I can't tell because my phone hasn't uh, updated. I got 101 on my iPad. And Dee Dee says, take a nap between lectures. I will. And what I'm going to do is, I don't know what lectures I even got set up, but they get in the same lecture at this point. So, because uh, I think most people didn't even care what I did. They just was trying to get somebody after COVID to come back into the gill. So I'll set up my second lecture while I'm at the first gill before I leave because they stay in so afterwards, so I won't be holding them up. So I'll just get that lecture packed right back up and then we'll just go right on over there and do the same lecture, so. <laughs> I went into a news uh, quilt shop in Coon Rapids and looked at a lot of stuff and told the young girl working about tea on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Hopefully she will join. Well, that's really sweet. <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, Darlene Crosby said it was me. I got a tracking number. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, who? How can I miss the names? I'm like, I mailed out to, uh, it was the, um, for fabric and so I'm like how can I miss those names I you know but I've been dealing with a lot of names so sorry Darlene you're right it is you <laughs> uh -uh. so yes all right so that's just one seam sold out of five so we got to get going <laughs> So I just cut this in half so that I could chain piece them instead of breaking the thread. That's the only reason I got it in two pieces. 
And of course, we're not going to be worrying about any seams being pressed here during the live. I just wait and press any long seams at my ironing station after the fact. I also have my little buddy Paige down here. She's trying to take a nap. She just got a snack before I went live. So she's good and content right now. Take this off and just sit it to the side. And uh, because of pressing these blocks, how I press them, I don't need any pins to sew this quilt top together because I pressed um, one block one direction, the other block the other direction. So as I'm putting these together, I'm just making sure the seams are going opposite and that's it. No pins today. So that's why I don't have pins. I did strategic pressing as I was making my quilt. So that's pretty cool. Those of you that are in the Facebook group and saw how uh, starching all this fabric messed up my big board cover, I ended up taking that cover off and I washed it and it shrunk up so bad. I, it won't even fit the top of the big board when it wrapped around like four inches underneath and now it won't even fit the top. So I ended up, I was planning on doing a new cover anyway, but I didn't realize that it was going to be necessary to do a new cover. Uh, and I figured because all the heat of pressing and all of that, that I figured that washing it, it wouldn't shrink. But that uh, material shrunk up so bad, it was ridiculous. So <laughs> I'm using it to now spray. I lay it on top of my big board so I can spray starch on it instead of having to spray on my big board so I'm not going to ruin it again. I need to pull out my serger and serge those edges because I have washed it again to see if it was going to shrink again and it unravels some more. So I'm like, I'm going to look up and I'm going to have a placemat. <laughs> so, but I've been trying to protect my ironing surface. stretching all these fabrics and I'm gonna make me a couple more covers too so I'm not washing or waiting on the one uh, you know I won't be held up if I need to switch out a throw so I'm gonna make some different ones but I need to pull my serger out and put some seams on them or something to stop all this raveling My niece talking about in Alabama, it's 83 degrees, no storms or rain. Good weather here in Alabama. And the same thing tomorrow. We should be getting some rain soon. I put some miracle Grow on my bushes and my um, perennial plants. Uh, I put some miracle Grow in the dirt, hoping that the rain comes so I don't have to put water on it myself. Hoping the rain do come. If not, tomorrow I got to go out there and hook up the holes. <laughs> Supposed to have had rain by now. <laughs> Sue talking about Paige is in the house. Yes, she is. And Sue is also reminding people to hit the thumbs up. Marsha Baker says, I did. <laughs> Melissa LePage said she did. So thank you, guys. And Kevin talking about, hey, Pagey Pooh. <laughs> she turned her head when I said her, when I said her name. Jim Carmel Perkins says, hey, everyone. Going to listen to the chat while I drive. Well, be safe. And, and Remo keeps saying that this is my dog. <laughs> Ooh. Now, it's my daughter's dog. I had to have a talk to her about it, but it's her dog. 
She says they are calling for rain late tomorrow night and storms tomorrow. Yeah, so that's what I want. I put the stuff out there just in case it came early because I mixed it with water, but I didn't put the full amount of water. So it's not just sitting there. I just wanted to, I didn't want to put too much water and then we have a whole lot of rain and it just, you know, it doesn't even reach the plant dirt. It just goes right past it. So trying to make sure I get some um, stuff. My bushes look so bad. They look dull. And it's because um, two reasons. My neighbor had trees. Basically, it was his trees that were uh, giving my bushes shade. And those trees have been gone for years. And I've noticed every year that they're just getting duller and duller. And then a couple years ago, I cut down my sweet gum tree. I couldn't take it anymore. And so now my bushes are getting straight sun all day. It has no shade. So, And they do need some shade. All right, let's take this one off. I know you all can't see a thing I'm sewing, but hey, that's what happens when you're sewing big pieces. <laughs> but we're getting there. Um, and Sandra says, I did, yes. And Lynette talking about roll tide, Lisa. Yep, my brother said they got rain coming tomorrow. He right after. Sue. Um, Marsha says, I also use a pump garden spray to starch big yards of fabric on my clothesline. And that's good too. You're doing it outside. Um, I don't, I've been trying to figure out how to get a clothesline outside. <laughs> I, 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 I guess I can hook onto my deck. Then I have to go to a, see, I don't have any trees <laughs> in my yard now that I and I only had a tree in the front yard. I got neighbors who have trees on my fence line, but they're not my trees. But I get their leaves, so I guess I could, you know, poke a hole in a tree. I guess. Jason says, I just cut down three sweet gum trees. They are the worst. Yes. The nice thing is that they're a big tree. They're a nice shade tree. I, I love the tree for as the shaping of the tree. I didn't have to do any shaping of that tree. It just naturally took care of itself. But, man, when I first um got here, it was so pretty. Nothing happened, you know, the first year. Second year, we come back. We got sweet gums. And then I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be every other year. So the next year, nothing happened. As that tree kept getting bigger and bigger, we start getting the little algae bulbs, the, the little blooms. And then when you touch them, you think that they are like little uh, berries or something, like little green berries. But when you touch them, they just turn into dust. And they made my allergies the worst. And I put up with that for a long time, and basically because my husband loved the tree, too. It was one of the reasons uh, why he wanted the house. He just liked the tree. We, we didn't know what kind of tree it was at the time um, I, uh, when we were looking. Um, yeah. That tree is something else. Every year, we got one or the other or both. <laughs> It was, a, it was terrible. And then when the algae thing came and you have your walkway, it was all over your shoes. It was a mess. So that meant it was coming into the house. People, When people visit, it was too much. We got rid of that tree. Uh, finally convinced him that it was okay to get rid of that tree after all these years we've had it. But it, it was a beautiful tree. And I do hate it because it did... In the summertime, it did put shade on our house. My neighbor's tree give us a little bit of shade on the house, but not in the yard. So, that is, I don't know why they even created that tree and planted that tree. And I, my neighborhood was filled with those trees, and people are gradually cutting them down. 
I saw a guy, a man out today, he was cleaning up his yard for the sweet gums. I said, yes. And I used to have to tell people to stay off my lawn because I didn't want people to walk on them and push them into your lawn. Then you're going to have big holes in your lawn. Oh, I hate that tree. You could have given me any other tree. Well, <laughs> I don't want acorns either. <laughs> That's what my neighbor has is an acorn tree, but at least they so little that 99% of them stay in her yard. So we don't have too much problem with those. Let's see who else has come in. I'm down at the bottom, guys. Erling Butler's here saying hi to and fellow quilters. I hope that all is well. June said we have thunderstorms often on, off and on today. Um, Marcia says I hooked my clothesline from a power pole to the old post near my fence. It's very saggy. <laughs> uh, Bonita says is FS101 that goes on the back of t-shirt quilts for the t-shirt quilt yes that's the best one to put on the back so yes <laughs> sue says they have a variety of sweet gums that don't produce sticker balls well i didn't i wasn't fortunate enough to have that and you know i have I, i've been trying to decide if i wanted to plant another tree and you know I, I'm, I'm only getting older it's like we've had two years where we haven't had a magnitude of leaves we only be picking up our neighbor's leaves now. So we don't have ours as well. I mean, it would be like three and four times a year. We would have 20 bags or more along with a trash can full of yard waste from just leaves. And so I'm not missing that right now. So I do love trees. I love landscape. But I'm thinking maybe I just need to look at somebody else's the older I get. Hi, Dolores Feltz. Jason says, it was the seed pods that I couldn't. Yes, them things is, ugh. Woo. Them things is a pain in the butt. And like I said, they look so pretty. They, the way they form, nature is something else. Uh, a lot of things that are pretty in nature are a beast when it's uh, time to get rid of them. Even the fact that the tree can produce sweet gum balls is, you know, it's just amazing. And then it's like there's nothing that you that I knew you could do with them or anybody that around here was doing anything with them. Like I said, we got plenty of them around here. There is no arts and crafts with sweet gum balls that I know of. But yeah. But yeah, we have to rake them and we stay off our lawn just so you don't push them into the lawn. So. sewing the last just I'm sewing row number four so let me just show it to you while it's short you can see where I've been hopefully you can see some different color stars in a different couple places so they're going to be kind of scattered this is actually the bottom right here this great dark gray star is the bottom of the quilt so this is what we got and I have to decide what I'm gonna do with it um, afterwards um, like if I'm gonna put a border or anything on here I have to decide right now I just needed to get this put together for my lecture I just wanted to show it um, so that's the main thing. I'm not really concerned about the border at this point or quilting. I won't be quilting for a minute. I still got to cut fabric and then I got to start um, cleaning up stuff in my long arm area where I do all my work. <laughs> so I got to cut more take five kits. So that's next week's job. I'll be sending out those invoices hopefully tomorrow. We'll see. <laughs> Uh-oh, I got two seams going the same direction. Oh, this one got pushed the wrong way on top. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you, TNC. Thank you, Lynette. Inga Green says, hi from Virginia. That quilt that you're working on is beautiful. Thank you so much. It's the Brightly quilt, and the pattern is by Cluck Cluck So. I was even on, um, I went to quilt on a day today. Uh, what was it that I was getting? They had grunge on sale. And so I ordered, um, I actually ordered, instead of getting yardage, I actually ordered 108 because 108 yardage is the same fabric as the front of the quilt. Like we buy for 40 inches and it's cheaper to buy 108 inch because they had it on sale. So I bought a couple yards of 108 inch of two different grunges. And they're just light background. Like I think I bought white grunge and cream. I didn't even get any uh, colors. And um, I, I noticed that the Brightly pattern was there by Cluck Cluck So. Some kind of way I spent $100 and my yardage was only $15 a yard. So that's $30. $60. So somewhere I spent another $40. So we'll see when it come in. <laughs> I'll share it with you. But, and so when I ordered two yards of grunge, that actually gave me the equivalent of six yards of background fabric. So it's not going to be a backing. It's just going to, it was just cheaper. So instead of paying, if I think it was, it was seven something per yard. They had different prices for different pieces of fabric. So let's say it was seven twenty a yard. Instead of me paying twenty one dollars for three yards, I paid fifteen dollars for three yards by getting the one oh eight. But then I bought two yards of each just to make sure I had enough. All right, so I'm gonna just break this thread because these pieces are so big, I don't normally do that. LaRae says maybe an evergreen, not pine, they shared a lot, but maybe there's a type that doesn't or in such a way to not make a mess. Yeah, because I know my friend Deborah Quelch, I think she's here, she's got a tree that drops some stuff under that tree. It's a beautiful tree, but it's all kind of stuff that drop off that tree. Hi, Liz Wilson from Michigan. <laughs> Thank you, Marsha, saying she loved the colors. King James, the truth came in, said, Hi, quilters. Glad I caught y'all. Several years ago, all the elm trees in the neighborhood got cut down because of Dutch elm disease. It was very sad. Yeah. And I hate that, like I said, I love the whole leaf, the fullness of the trees of the sweet gum. I just can't take, I, I, I just, I couldn't take the mess anymore. So. Uh, I really feel bad that we had to get them down, but I noticed another, you know, other neighbors before us had gotten rid of theirs. And uh, I was trying to get bids and stuff, and I just had people, like the big tree companies were giving me ridiculous prices for uh, cutting it down. I don't know why I'm putting this up. I got to sew the other half. And so I just, we kind of just kept it there for a little bit, and then... All of a sudden, I got the right price um, come in, and I'm like, okay, we're going to do it now. And uh, they did an okay job. We had to call them back a couple times. So, this is beige. Trying to figure out where this goes. So, this is the top. Just trying to know where the top of the quilt is so I know which end to put on this bottom. <laughs> and I know gr dark gray is in the bottom. So I know that. Dark gray is at the bottom. Last seam on this. I 
I actually had somebody contact me wanting to know if I make them a kit <laughs> or well, they wanted to know how to get the kit for this. It's like I haven't cut a, a kit for this, but uh, you know, I'm in the middle of cut and take fives, but yeah. Ellen Tater says, greetings from South Dakota, everyone. Beautiful quilt, Miss T, really coming together nicely. Love the 108s for long borders and sashing, plus backing and binding. Yes. So every time you buy 108, don't just look at it as quilt backing, especially if that same company sells it in 45 uh, inches wide, too. Um, think about, you know, it's a lot cheaper to buy the 108. And I actually cut my borders lengthwise when I put them on my quilts anyway. Keep it from stretching so much. This is our last seam until I do the border. I know I want to put some green on here as a spacer, and then I've just got to pick an African print I want to use. Let's see, 12 times 5. This quilt is now 60 by 72. That's actually a nice lap size quilt. I, I, I have a bad habit of making everything big. <laughs> I have no idea why. <laughs> all got the nerve to be over here snoring. She normally goes with my husband when I'm on live. She come up here toward the end. Because my talking normally bothers us. She think I'm talking to her. So I guess she says later today she getting over it. Nerd to be snowing like she just had a rough day. Do I see I have a huge pine tree and so I didn't have to mow up all the pine needles. I put a big circle of bricks around it and let the needles be like mulch. Yes. Paula Smith is here. Hi, T. Quilt. And all quilters, beautiful fabric. You rock. Thank you, Paula. I know I'm not going all the way back. If I miss something, guys, just retype it. Janice says, thanks, T.I. We're think buying 108 fabric use. Yes. Especially when it when you're looking at prices, um, when they put stuff on sale. I actually got an extra yard of fabric by buying the 108 for free. <laughs> Take this pen out <clears throat> that I had telling me it gets connected somewhere. All right, so this is done, but I'm, you know, again, it's not pressed. I'll go to my big board for that later, but. Just so you all know, it's sewn into one piece at this point. And I have no idea where the other pen is. I had two pens in here. Here it is. So, yeah. So, this is done. And I've got my little spot of different color stars throughout. I've got five different colors. And then I've got 10 that are all in the burgundy color. So I'll try to get a photo uh, at some point. Maybe if I can get out tomorrow before it rains, I'll try to get a photo and put it in the Facebook group. So you all don't have to wait like six months to see 
<laughs> the finished results since I'm not able to edit videos right now. And Darlene saying she bought uh, 108 Grunge for my BH Mystery in Aqua. I really enjoy Grunge fabrics, yes. That's uh, Lizette. Sue says, a couple weeks ago, Missouri Star had Kona White 108 on sale. Yep, it would be background winner. Yes. Tom Ed, uh, Eckery is here. Hey, Tom. Saying, uh, hey. And all tea quilters. Hey, tea and all tea quilters. Billy Weatherreed says, hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. Darcy's my Dr. Seuss quilt would have been 58 by 58, but I wanted to add a border, so it ended up being 70 by 70. Yes. Kathy Carter. Hi, Kathy. Welcome to the channel. Says, I'm new here, but don't quilt. Have y'all seen on YouTube? So, yes, quilting store in Las Vegas, and they have great prices on quilting fabrics. I make bags and use it for my linings. Yes, a lot of people over here know about So, yeah, they run two uh, uh, systems so they can have me and them on. <laughs> That's funny. And they've been on since, like, 3 o'clock or something earlier doing. They were on earlier, so they've been on a long time selling fabric. Harriet Susan Franklin says, I received my Bento Box African Style Quilt Kit yesterday. Beautiful colors, and thank you. Well, thank you for ordering. I appreciate that. I haven't even had a chance to even sew the bento kit, but uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who gets theirs posted on Facebook. I'm wanting to see who can get it done so I can see it. And Kathy told me, I knew this was a smart group. Billy Weathery says, love the bright colors of your quilts. Well, thank you. So I've got that done. I'm now going to move on to Four Star General. Um. I just need to press that, and then I need to decide how much bigger I want to do that as far as borders and stuff. So now I need to move this phone. And we are going to start working with Four Star Generals Revisited So Along that we're working on as well, although we don't have any more new patterns available. And this is my pattern. I made these blocks already in the regular size here. And so now I'm making them. I'm making two quilts. And I've enlarged the pieces. So that's what I am currently working on. And uh, trying to get my pieces lined up. Some of these pieces, it don't matter if the piece is right side up or not. See, I get real crazy when I start working with prints. <laughs> uh, with, with letters, you know, stuff with letters on it. And I'm trying to see how did I cut this apart. I thought I cut this out of a square, but it sure don't. Oh, I know what it is. It's because uh, when I cut them, I just took the whole stack off. So I needed to like grab one from each stack. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff that drives me nuts. <laughs> and then I'll sit here and try to figure out how am I going to get these to line back up. Hold on, let's see. Take these out. And one more stack somewhere. I got four blocks here I need to make. So what happened is I needed to take one from each stack. And who knows if I have the right side up or down, you know. <laughs> okay. So that's plan. I can read that. And I think that one went here. So then I find the one that goes with this one. Yeah. So those four go together. 
See, this is the kind of stuff that drives me cuckoo. But I do it anyway. <laughs> and I'm praying now that I don't have another directional print so it'll work out. I'm trying to make it so all the text will be up. All right, we need four patches. So we'll start with that. And then we need hourglass blocks. So we'll start with the four patches. Hey, Stephanie, memoirs of a long arm quilter. Uh, the green, um, I don't forgot. Um, I did a fabric haul that came from Whittles. Uh, I forgot the name of that grunge. I forgot. I have to think about it. I've said it in a couple of videos, but right now I can't remember the name of that green. And I don't have any of it in here. I don't even know if they put the name on the salvage or not, but I don't have it in here. It's probably in a African fabric box somewhere. I bought three different fabrics and I think that's where I put them. So, so yes, I don't have these little music notes got the nerve to be directional. Can you believe it? <laughs> this is going to be very interesting. <laughs> this music note print is uh, directional. Okay. So if I'm making the top one. <laughs> um, I want this one. And these two. All right. <laughs> I uh, It drives me nuts when stuff isn't upright in a quilt. I either got to make it all so that it doesn't go upright. So it's just all twisted and turned. Or I got to make it all be upright. And I think I'm going for the all is upright. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking me a whole lot longer to make these blocks. So I'm glad these blocks are easy to make. So that's one. Um, uh, Kevin says, Miss T, you're beginning to sound like me with directional prints. Well, I always, well, it depends on the, what I'm doing. If it's a quilt block and I have the direction stuff, then, yeah, I need to do something else. I need to make them go the same thing. But if it's like a scrap quilt overall, sometimes I don't care. Sometimes I do. It just depends on where it is in the quilt. So, yeah, I do um, have issues with stuff being upright. And this is like one of those prints that's kind of scattered around the quilt top, but there are, you can tell that there still is a top part to the quilt. It's still directional to me, even though some of the text goes sideways. So basically, I'm going to be up here making one hourglass at a time. <laughs> because I got to make sure I match up the right ones together. And this dog is still snoring. Got the nerve. Dorsey is also reminding people to hit the thumbs up button. We got more people in. The numbers have increased. So thank you guys that have hit the thumbs up button. I really appreciate it. Uh, Stephanie says, <laughs> yes, Stephanie. <laughs> um, Francis says, 
tea. I like the border so much on the four star gender that I'm going to use them on another quilt that I'm thinking about making. Yes, it is beautiful. The little half stars are pretty. You're gutsy, girl. I know I'm making them for two quilts and I'm about to go nuts now. <clears throat> okay, we got one done. So I'm thinking I just do the opposite. Okay. So this would be the bottom one. They would just be opposites of the top. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs> I think my logic works. We'll find out soon. <laughs> Ooh -wee. And hope I don't have any other directional prints. Okay, so now we're to the side. And this one goes over here. This one goes over there. And then the reds are on the side. Then which white goes with which? This one goes here, this one goes there. All right. <laughs> I think we got it. Dorsey had to sleep on the couch last night because my husband wouldn't stop snoring. Yes, honey. Ooh-wee. She knocked out. She's going to be up all night looking at me like I'm crazy. It's funny. I, I roll over and I can, I'm, I'm a light sleeper and I can kind of tell when somebody is like looking at me or my environment has changed. And she just sitting there wild eyed just looking at me. It's like, you must be crazy. And I'm up late, so I know she doesn't have to go out to the restroom. I mean, to use the bathroom because. I take her out like one o'clock sometimes. So. And that's it. This basically is four patches and hourglass blocks. This was the, one of the easiest blocks to make. I think they get harder when you have the flying geese. They don't know how to just give you four flying geese. They give you like eight and 12 of them or something in these instructions and of course we're not going to do any pressing um because uh we're just not <laughs> i'm just going to press on my desktop down here i don't have the camera down enough for you all to see that but i'm just gonna use my little wood press stick here and uh call it a day um hey sharon lewis Sheila says, Miss T and my friend Barbara San Diego and I in Tamukla, California received our take five and bento kits today. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. So yeah, hopefully you all work on them together. That's really cool. I wish I had a quilting friend like that when I was first starting out. I did have, a, uh, I sold with my friend Sarah. Um. But, you know, we were both switching over from making clothes, so it was kind of hard to know what the other one was doing to work on some things together. We worked on a lot of projects together, though. But that's pretty cool in two different states. No, they just different parts of the state. Okay. They're both in California. Whoops. Okay, so I got this thing going. Let's see if I can back up. 
<laughs> nope, it's just going to be an ugly scene. But that's okay. <laughs> My uh, seam got caught. I was one stitch past. It could have been worse, so it's okay. Um, so that's pretty cool. The take fives are so cute. I um redid the pattern. I think Francis is still in here, and I used the uh, Francis and Kevin's photos in my new pattern. So, um, but when I think about it, Francis, I need to print you a pattern to use since your quilt's in there, so she can keep it. <laughs> Kevin don't keep papers. <laughs> That's why he's a lot neater. He knows he's not going to do a quilt again. He doesn't keep the... Okay, so I guess because I'm not pressing this with the heated iron right now, my little, uh, when I'm uh, dealing with these hourglasses, because it's going across the diagonal, it's giving me a little bit of trouble here, but we're going to work our way through it. Oops, I still got one more to do. And uh, Janice says she has a few more border blocks to go. Um... I I think we're halfway uh March makes the sixth month of the so along for that four star general. So we're halfway done. And I I was putting my quilts together as I go. I need to uh do the last two months. I need to put the sashing on those blocks. I think the red ones have the sashing. It's my um Boutique ones that don't have the sashing between the blocks. And then I need to do it for this month. I haven't even made border blocks yet. Normally I would have all this stuff done before the month hit, but not this time. I've been busy cutting kits, ordering fabric and cutting kits. And I'm trying to stay off that fabric website. I am working hard to stay off of that website. <laughs> I just love fabric. And I got to sell some of this stuff I got first. All right. And I don't think I'm going to be doing uh, probably any more kits. Because like I said, I'm probably going to start working on retreat. Unless retreat goes so smooth, I don't have a lot to do. Then I might add something. But right now, I don't think I'm going to be cutting kits. I do think I want to do some drunkard's pass on the African prints and also tumblers, I think. But I haven't had a chance to, you know, cut those yet. So I just think those are nice staples that will look good. The drunkard's pass, I think, will look really good with African prints because it's got big areas. Um haven't been watching the take five is striking with sashing yes i like it i like it both ways though i'm just one of those people that I, I that's how i started quilting was from my great aunt sewing up stuff like that so i like fabrics just thrown all together too but i do like the sashing as well mary says question what is a bento box it's either Chinese or Japanese, look, Google it, because that's where it comes from. It's actually um, one of the Oriental things, and it was a box that they would put stuff in. And uh, I don't know who named the first, uh, I don't know who named the pattern bento, though. Okay, so this is my right side. <laughs> now I'm trying to put it up here so everything stays upright. That's top. 
I'm assuming you're. Huh. Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> oh my goodness. If I turn this, it's sideways. If I turn it upside down, it's upside down. So what happened? What had happened was, <laughs> let's see what this one looks like. I gotta clip the center, my little connecting thread here. Uh, <laughs> she talking about he, Kevin does keep papers, especially by his friend Miss T. You didn't keep the take five. Kevin gave me back everything, packaging and all, and I I recycled it. <laughs> well, not the pattern because I had updated the pattern, but okay. So something happened. Oh, <laughs> this one's in the wrong space. <laughs> it's in the wrong position. Okay. All right. I sold them, right? I just had put one in the wrong position. All right. <laughs> um... Dorsey says, I like patterns that have big areas if you are using a really beautiful fabric because you see more of it. Yes. And that's what I think the Drunkard's Path will do. I also, I got some ginormous, I bought a ginormous tumbler die that makes tumblers nine inches. My thing is, I need to make a design using it because I think, I think, people will not be able to add in something to make a background. So I need to figure out how I want to cut that. So that's one of the things that I do have that I want to do. Question T, when you finished quilting for others, do you have special bags to you return them in? Brainstorming from some something unique in this area. Long armors here have none woven uh, zippered bags. I have, I do have those bags. I also have just basic handbags because I feel like people will use those. I find uh, people brought back my handbags uh, in their next quilts than they did when I gave them the, um, it was like the plastic bag that had side panels that were breathable. And then they had the handle on top, kind of like what you have a comforter in. For some reason, they never brought those back, but they always brought back the, uh, handbags just my opinion i do i do give new customers a handbag okay so i'm caught up let's see what this looks like let me see um I'm gonna is this even plugged in? I don't have any water in here. I have to I have distilled water for for one iron and I gotta use tap water for the other iron. <laughs> and you can't mix them up. Whoops. I just put water on my desk down here. It's like the, uh, this is a computer desk, has a little type typewriter tray. Got it on my end of my desk and my typewriter tray. So I'll be using that towel that I just used to clean you all with. To get the water up. And maybe I will iron these pieces, but that means I've got to go get my little ironing board because I moved it to take it to Kevin's house that I didn't use. Hold on. Sorry to bother you, Missy. Sorry to bother you. Okay. 
and I have on my pajamas. I'm ready for bed, guys. Ugh. All right, so we got something we can press on now. It's not heated up yet. And now I'm pushing all my little fabric pieces. Stuff's getting rearranged in here. Let's see. And Francis is saying Dunkard's path will look really nice with African fabrics. Yes. <laughs> Bento box is a Japanese style lunch box with built in one to six compartments and toxics. Yes. And that's what I couldn't remember was the part about it being a lunch box. And I knew it was some kind of a box that they put stuff in, but I couldn't remember what it was. And I think that's why I was surprised that it was had to do with food. It reminds, reminds me of the Chinese box, Chinese food box, but it's Japanese. Let me go back and see what uh, messages I missed beforehand. Earlene says, T, I received my bento box too. Did you receive my order for scrap bags? Should have sent you an email. I should have sent you. Yes, I do. I just don't have any scrap bags. You were the last one, I think, to send it in, and I'm in the process. Um, I have made, I think I need like, at least three more bags or something like that so i was like trying to find any scraps that i had that i could use for that so i'm i haven't gotten to your bag yet you were the last one um billy is still working on a t-shirt quilt and finding best and finishing best friend who passed ufo oh and Lizette says, that's why I try not to buy directional prints. <laughs> right. Because uh, then they'll drive you crazy if you um uh, deciding, like, in a quilt block that you want them in a particular spot. I mean, this came to a complete halt. <laughs> and now I'm deciding I might want to press these. Um, these are not batiks. Even though I starched them, I didn't put a whole lot of starch in them. I actually watered my starch down. And so I'm like, let me press these to make sure these are going the right direction. I dropped my, sit, my snips. All right, that looks a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go crazy with the starch on these. I'm trying to save my, my ironing surfaces, okay? Because I wasn't going to wait for the starch to penetrate like I normally do. I was pressing because I was prepping to come through the live and knew that if I didn't come in here with another project, I was just going to be talking to you guys and that was it. No sewing. I kind of figured I would get through my Brightly quilt. Let me go back to the bottom. TNC says, thank you for the live and the chat to your beautiful, inspiring work. I'm calling it a night. Good night, everyone, and thank you for your chat, too. So good night, TNC. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, Stephanie says, did you get my many emails? Laughing out loud, blank Kevin. I do have yours. I was still waiting on the scrap bag, too. So I'm waiting on, I'm still waiting. I'm making uh, scrap bags. Uh, at first, I cut the... Fat eights, the ten, the approximate ten by eighteen pieces. I cut those first, and then I started working on the scrap bags. So some people got billed today, and I'm still working, and I still got your stuff. I got all of your fabrics cut. If you all ordered fabrics, I got all the fabrics cut in bags. I'm just waiting on scrap bags. And I told you all I didn't have a whole lot of scrap bags. If you want fat eights, I got those available. I got. One, I got two different ones. I got one with eight pieces and one with 16 pieces. Those I do have. Good night, Vivian. 
Okay, Earlene. And that's what I figure. Like, as I get scraps and stuff, I'll be filling bags. So, I do have, I, I feel more bags than I thought I could. But I think right now I'm out of scraps. So, I'm trying to wait until I start cutting the next, um, the next group of stuff. And unless I come across something else. I've been going into boxes, um, trying to see what I have in these boxes. And so I've just been uh, cutting stuff. So, and most everybody is uh, ordering like one pound too. So it's not gonna be. It, it's not like I have to find a whole lot. But then when I start putting fabric on the scale, it's like, woo! It take a while to get to a pound. <laughs> Just press these either way. And then press the final rows open, I guess. One block is better than no blocks done at this point. Because who knows when I'm coming back into this room. So we've got 45 more minutes left tonight. Hopefully, I'll get at least another block done. Should get them all done, but you know, I like to read comments. <laughs> all right. Press this that way. This that way. I like the Panasonic iron for being tiny. It gets in the, you can use it in a small workspace. But if you're trying to iron some yardage, it's, it's not your only iron to have. <laughs> it, it is a tiny bottom if you're trying to iron yardage or a quilt top. Next set of four patches. Mm. <laughs> okay. So I looked at my block that I already made. I guess I can turn them. Okay. Because I'm like, my four patches go in the opposite direction. But because I'm using directional fabric, all of these blocks in this one is going to be turned. So... It's always something. All right. <laughs> Woo wee. So this block, the center is going to be turned a little center four patch on all four of them because I can't make one different. Ooh, I wasn't looking at the picture on the pattern. All right. Directional print comes. Rear's little ugly head again. All right. So we're going to lay out all of our pieces here. The good thing on these is I only got the white directional print now. They're not all directional. So top. Let's put you right here. Top. Sides, bottom, red 
it's on the inside and we just need white to be upright Puzzle doesn't fit. <laughs> this puzzle don't fit this time. So we know it's not this one. What do you go to? You go to this. So, can you go with this? No, 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 no. <laughs> Trying to see if this goes with any of the pieces I have here. And, you know, it's one of those fabrics, like I said, it's not really a directional print, per se. But I'm making it anyway. <laughs> Large prize. I found that piece. Maybe we just need to lay all three of them out. How about that? See where they go. <laughs> Having fun with my fabric, I guess. Playing with my fabric. Produce. I see the word produce. The oven turkey. I don't have a clue. Mm -mm. This is right side up. This is down. This is the left. Got those two. I got oh, it's lettuce, not produce. <laughs> Woo wee! But once I get them set up, we're gonna be ready to go. That's one block. That's two blocks. Now we just gotta set up this other one. Now I'm taking this stuff with me. <laughs> oh my goodness! It'll be all right. Okay, so now I've got these two pieces. I just got to figure out where they go. That one's here. This one's here. Morning issue. Yeah, I think this is just a weird piece just a weird piece all right so we're not gonna worry about it anymore we're gonna put them in position as soon as I find what happened to my red <laughs> in the chair okay <laughs> Woo -wee. She's talking about blame Kevin. It's okay. I got everything compiled on you, Stephanie. Um, Deborah says she's got to go. I have been sewing all day and now I'm exhausted. Yes. Beverly Aikens saying good night to Colleen. So good night, Colleen. I didn't see that one. Rhonda Bolo came in, says hey, T and everyone. Good night, Deborah. And. 
Dorothy is also reminding people on your way out to check your thumbs up. Make sure you thumbs up. Are the fat eights on your website or do I need to send an email? That's Benita. You know, I, I mailed your package today. I uh, They're not on my website because they were in the orders. Uh, but I do have some left. If you want some, if you want fat ace, just let me know. I have a to I had a total of sixteen and eight is twenty four. So I did a set with sixteen and a set with eight, and they're all different. The two sets. So if you want all twenty four, you're looking at like forty five dollars. Thirty for one, sixteen for the other. doing a retreat will there be special hold on special quilt block pattern that we will need to complete or do we bring any project to work on i'm going to be talking about that i was trying to get through the month of march um with people uh so that i know who's all paid and every everybody that's in the group is going before i start getting into detail so more information is coming we are going to be doing a, a stack and whack project. We are going to be doing some other stuff too. So I'm just um, going to be sending that information later. But you can also bring your own projects. You don't have to do what the group is doing. You also, you know, you have the right or the. It's okay for you to do that. You won't be looked down upon if you're not doing what we're doing. But you know, you can do that. Um. I always bring extra projects to retreat just in case I get done with what uh, is on the agenda. I can have stuff to work on. So I always plan to bring two, maybe three projects to a retreat, no matter what's going on. And I always say you not, may not finish them, but the fact that if you get tired of working on one project, you can always go work on something else. That's what I like to, that's why I bring different projects to retreat. Um, uh, Nanyi says, T, when making t-shirt quilts, do you add backing? Do you mean batting? Yeah, she means batting. Uh, some say it's not necessary. It's probably not necessary, but I add it anyway. I feel like it'll make the quilt wear better. Uh, I like, I don't mind a heavy quilt, and I don't feel like they're so heavy that you can't turn under the quilt if you're in bed using it. I have not made any t-shirt quilts where none of any of my customers didn't want the um, batting in it. Now, I did make a memory quilt that used all kinds of clothing from somebody. And they wanted the old-fashioned style that her grandmother had made uh, years ago. They wanted to keep that type of tradition in their family with quilts without the batting. And so I have made three that doesn't have batting. And I did like them, but they're more summer quilts. I still feel like if you were looking for warmth, that that quilt's not warm enough for a winter bed quilt or a winter quilt where you're actually cold. It was like a summer quilt. Uh, but the majority of my t-shirt quilts all have batting in them. And I just use a cotton batting. And I even had one person that wanted double bat. He wanted a polyester on top. So I put a cotton and a polyester in it. Now that quilt was heavy. It was queen size. He wanted it to look, uh, he, he didn't want it to be like a comforter, but he wanted it to have the thickness of a comforter. So my quilting make, kept it so that, um, my quilting kept it so that it didn't have the comforter feel to it because I do, you know, I did like one inch uh, grid. I did a herringbone that was within a one inch of quilting. So it wasn't very poofy like a comforter you buy out of a store. But uh, he wanted it thick. He didn't want a thin quilt. So I've done quite a few different things. Or she says, I had to iron a table cover that my husband had to use for a presentation. I had to use both my irons. The thing was as big as my ping pong table. Wow. <laughs> Got an iron on each side. Michelle Quilter says, hi, T and friends from Central New York. Hey, Michelle. Thank you, Darcy. Um, what 
was that Darcy or no, that was Darlene. I'm sorry. Darlene put somebody in timeout. So thank you. Um the Molly says, Miss T, check your left sleeve on the floor for the red. Yeah, because it fell. <laughs> uh thank you. I don't know. Oh, she's talking to Julie Quilts. Okay, thank you. No thanks and no thanks. <laughs> Um, good night, Billy. Thank you so much for popping in and chatting with us. Elena Carter is coming in. Say hi to you and all quilters. So, yes. Just wanted to get through the chats. So now we're going to sew these hourglass units. And I'm sure the little Panasonic iron is long cut off by now. <laughs> uh, I wanted to make sure I had all of these pieces laid out. And then the hard part is going to be putting them back into position. <laughs> I think I got them all mixed up when I sold them the second seam. So I guess if I don't finish these uh, hour, at least the hourglass units, I better finish these jokers before I leave out of this room. So I don't have to worry about this uh, directional print anymore. And then to have two directional prints in one block, I was like, whoa. I didn't realize that music print was directional. So, uh, I know some of you all working on t-shirt quilt cool stuff. What are the rest of you guys working on? I haven't seen a whole lot of comments about projects tonight. Let me know what you all are working on. Not necessarily right now, but your next sewing project. Sue says, it's been a great chat tonight, quilters, but I need to get some sleep. Be safe and bless. Good night, Sue. If you're working tomorrow, be safe traveling out tomorrow, especially if you're in a, any rain that may come. LaVray says, another good reason for batting is to help protect your backing from the seams of the top. And the and the backing could have same. Some people take the back of the the front of the the back of the t-shirts and use them on the back of the quilt. So you're correct. That's another good reason to uh, use them. I just think it just helps protect the quilt. It lasts a lot longer. Lasts a lot longer. Okay. I went to sleep. Let's see, I like using this on a hard surface. Now I've got my press mat up here. Let me use the table. I'm gonna have to slide this down. The final seam I'm gonna press open just to reduce some of the bulk. All right. Patty C says, hey, T, working on foundation paper piecing project. I need to do that for Gil uh, challenge. Haven't done that. All right. All right. So now we can sew the top and bottom onto here. Right sides up, of course. It's a lot of work. <laughs> and 
these are all going to get knocked off, so I may as well move them ahead of time. Avoid the catastrophe. All right. This is a busy background parent. just one seam away from the big reveal <laughs> well sort of yeah I was gonna say sort of kind of but yeah just want to press this open that way I like pressing with my little wood stick I don't it's just a habit I think and then I still want to press with the yarn just gives it memory So this little four patch unit and then I can press the block. Pressing this seam open. Hold on, guys. I'll read some comments soon as I press this one. I see people are telling me what they're working on. I do want to know. Because <laughs> I can always, uh, you know, sew more blocks later. But I do want to at least show you one. my little busy print block <laughs> uh, this background print is really busy I'm doing a uh, red white black and gray so this just uh, the gray on here is really light on this block I have two blocks with red stars and two blocks with black stars so that's uh, the block with all of the fabric going the correct uh, orientation the background prints and the music print on that one <laughs> so let me go see what people are working on let's see hi T working on foundation paper piecing that was Patty I think I read hers Stephanie is doing two donation quilts for the Gill Janet's working on exploding heart pattern I I think I've quilted, I either quilted mine and don't have binding on it. I think that's what it is. Uh, I was going to use the scraps and I got to find, figure out what I did with the scraps <laughs> to uh, cut the uh, scraps so I can make a scrappy border for mine. Scrappy binding for mine. I think it's quilted if I'm not mistaken. I hope it's quilted. Because um, I plan to take it to the lecture as well um that's pretty cool and then i even cut another one out that since i had fabric out i cut another one out that i haven't even sewed Rima was cleaning sewing area washing clothes and cleaning bedroom and basement i don't clean on sunday i plan on sewing tomorrow that's awesome uh print scenes working on project bags to store all of many projects that's cool as well i think she shared one of those on facebook if i'm not mistaken I'm working on putting my sewing projects away. That's Darlene. I'm having major surgery the 18th, and I will be a while before I can sit and sew. So prayers for you, Darlene. Hopefully things go according to plan. And uh, sorry you won't be able to sew. Uh, Remo is asking, is there a Zoom tomorrow? I have no idea. Eric hasn't said. He hasn't posted any anything. Scarlett Dale says, working on my long arm trip around the world. Yes. 
that's pretty cool i started working on one of those i've done trip around the world in the past i've been sewing since 1994 but i was making one of the ones that's scrappy kind of like what bonnie hunter is doing and i just made some blocks i don't think i ever finished it i have to figure out what i did with the blocks and stephanie is also prepping for a jn class judy niemeyer class at the end of the month uh people are sending uh darlene prayers for speedy recovery so that's really sweet Um, Michelle is finishing a quilt from a Gill mystery pattern and finishing a small quilt for Project Linus next. So that's awesome. Um, Bonita says it turned out great. Earlene Butler says, finish my New York beauty quilt and t-shirt quilt. Now to work on the backs. Yes, that's progress. <laughs> Thanks, Darlene, saying the block is cute. Love the block from Remo and Julie Quilts and Darcy and Michelle. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, busy is wonderful from Melissa. When I said the block is a busy background, Prince James says, I think this will help to keep me accountable. <laughs> uh, great block from Fritz Seams. Thank you. Jason says, I'm still piecing a bunch of row to Oklahoma blocks. Almost ready to put some rows together. So that's cool. Stephanie says, uh, turned out pretty. Thank you. And like I said, when I get, when I press on my uh, thing back there, it'll be nice and flat. It'll be ready to go. Thank you. Winona says, your block is gorgeous. Great job. Didi is working on blocks that are all different size. Kids, fussy cut pieces in blocks of 12 and a half inches with pink reds, with pink rows between the blocks and a train track and a river and a lake. Kid game quilt. Now that's pretty cool. I will send it to you to quilt and you can see it then. <laughs> that's okay, Ivy. No problem. I know people have different names on here, so thank you so much. She's in uh, Texas, Arlington, Texas. And I don't know if I remember because I've been seeing my other people for a while, so that's how come I know their names, but I'll try to remember. And if I mess up, just keep letting me know until I get it. <laughs> but that's Ivy. Um, and Francis is also working on a Judy Niemeyer quilt called Stepping Stones. And Phyllis is working on photo blocks, so that's pretty cool. So, let's um, press these little pieces and get them. I wonder if I could press them on a stick with my wood press, if that'll hold it a little bit better. This harder than the press surface. I just didn't put a lot of starch in you know, heavy concentration of starch. I starch my fabrics before I cut, but I didn't I didn't have time to be waiting around. <laughs> so and I like I said, I'm trying to save my pressing surface so I'm not having to keep washing um my cover. So and I don't starch on the heat press at all anymore. I used to, but I don't anymore. The steam press, not the heat press, the steam press. All right, that's one. Good night, Earlene. Thank you so much. We only got a few more minutes here. And uh, we'll be calling it quits as well. I may leave this here and come back tomorrow and uh, finish this. I need to wash my hair. That's what I'm trying to get done. I took off nail polish so I could wash my hair. 
and then redo my nails put i'm just trying to protect my nails till they grow out so and now i have nothing on them so i'm thinking i'm gonna wash my hair but we'll see how that goes <laughs> When Anina says, I am new to your group, but I love what you all are doing. Always great content, always or real. Well, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that. I um, I see other people are also sending you welcomes as well. So thank you guys. We are a nice group of quilters here. Very friendly people. Okay, now we're going to press this little four patch and put it on the board so we can get it in the right position to start putting the other pieces up there, right side up. <laughs> so I'm going to have to move this block. So we can get things lined up, starting with our squares. And I was trying to finish at least one more block before I left. Right there. All right. I think this is the busiest block I've ever made. <laughs> We're gonna press this seam open, but I gotta clip the little connecting thread. Um, Beverly Aikens is also saying good night, everyone. Good night, Beverly. Thank you as well. Remo saying good night. Thank you. Janet saying good night, all. Enjoy. Thank you. More comments to Darlene, so you all are sweet. Okay, press this one. I think this is the top. It's number one. I'm trying to put some of them back in position before I mess them up. <laughs> All right. So, I guess I know I got to pack up a couple of orders tomorrow and do some invoices. I guess that's what I'll be doing tomorrow. Getting the invoices, trying to get the invoices out for the next take five. For sure. And then um, if you don't have a scrap bag, I'll probably get your invoice out tomorrow, too. Scrap bag invoices are on hold until I get them made. I made all that I could with the fabric that was out. <laughs> Trust me, there's more fabric. <laughs> We, you know, not not my fabric I'm using for yardage. I did not cut from that. I'm cutting from stuff that I've already used in kits that are leftover cuts. So. Um, Francis, good night. <laughs> Fr 
different seams. Absolutely, the long arm will give you hours and hours of enjoyment. Somebody's asking about long arm. Yep. So we're going to get these little units cut, I mean sewed, and then we're going to press them and get these in position. And then it's just sewing this nine patch together. Nine patch block. All right, we got three of them ready. No, two. <laughs> we have two. Use this stick here. Forget all about the fact that I got to clip the seam in the middle. So I can press this seam open. This should be left side. This should be the bottom. Thread. And stop making so much noise. I didn't even press the steam button. All right. Now I'm pressing it. All right. This is the bottom. And I've got the other side still on here, but we can sew the first part of the first row, get it started. This one's got a little bit more contrast. Cut the piece. All right, um, is Darlene getting a long arm? Let's see. Oh, she says, I have a new long arm I've never used. Looking forward to good health and lots of sewing. Yes. <clears throat> Don't let Kevin know. He'll try to come get it, girl. Oh, okay, so she wraps the peel in a piece of deli meat. That's pretty cool. Nice way to get it in. I got to get my meal for today. I'm hungry all of a sudden. I got to press this final piece here. So I can sew my last row on. Well, my column to the row. All right. This goes on the outside. Right. Let's see. So I got two out of four blocks. Just got to make the other two. Like I said, these are pretty simple. I made it complex <laughs> by having directional print. So don't pay me any attention on this one. This is the easiest block we've had thus far. 
just don't do what I did. I did not realize this fabric was directional. I just cut. Then when I go to lay it out, of course I know it's directional now. I should have just sold it without looking and just let it be cattywampus. <laughs> Twist and turn. But once I noticed it, I, I couldn't do it. All right. This one that way. This one the other way. Oops. Heat him, hit it with an iron. Let me make sure this iron is still on. Yeah, it's still on. <laughs> we don't want water to start pouring out of it. Hi. Hey, Eric. Good night, Stephanie. I'm trying to back up and I hit the cut. It took a, it did lock stitches and cut. Exactly what I hit. But that wasn't what I was trying to do. But it's too late now. My seam is locked in. Oh, well. <laughs> I was trying to lift the seam allowance up. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that. And... Hi, Rose Hinton. So, got to press my seam allowance on this one. And, hey T, there was a pattern that you had on your website. I think it was called Starburst. Do you still have the pattern? That was a pattern that you had on your website. It was called Starburst. I have Exploding Star. That's the pattern that I have. Is that what you're talking about, Eric? All right. Yes, it's still on my website. Are you are you wanting to do that? I don't know what I'm doing with pens. <laughs> I haven't used a pen all night. I've been using the, you know, my seams are pressed opposite directions. What are you doing? You're not sewing a border. That's about the only time I make myself pin is when I'm doing a border to make sure. All right, we're just going to stop here and press this thing. Yeah, my, uh, Eric, I see where you're saying that my patterns are all the way down at the bottom of my website, but um, I can just send you that.
and it has that pattern has four different ways you can do it you can where you can stop continue you can make it in any size you want so it's one of those uh, flexible patterns all right we got another one done <laughs> more uh the black stands out more than the red star i think they both stand out pretty good though so i gotta make one more black star one more red different fabrics and uh i'm using the same background I did this one, doing this one a little different. I'm doing most of the blocks, one fabric is in the background, and then every row will have one block that has four different backgrounds, and they're going to be stir-stepping through. So, um, thanks, Rose. Dar uh, Darlene's reminding people to hit the thumbs up as you leave. We're also going to be ending our live here in another minute. Um, uh, Bonita says, that's very nice. What are you going to do with the red, black, gray, and white quilt when you're finished? Originally, I was doing it because I wanted to show differences in lecture just from picking fabrics. Um... I uh, don't know if I'm going to be doing too many more lectures, so I don't know yet what I'm going to be doing with the quilt. <laughs> if I even finish it, I might just, this is block number six. I might do three more blocks, and then I might stop this uh, red, white, and black, and gray because I think it's going to be too huge anyway, uh, but I'm not sure yet. So we'll see how far, I, if I keep going or not. Um, I'm just thinking about, you know, I'm getting older, I'm getting more involved with YouTube stuff, um, selling fabric now, selling other gadgets and stuff. It's like, I don't know if I have time to do lectures right now. So thank you guys. Asad Gajar saying hello. Asad Thanks, Lynette. So, yeah, I think I'm going to um, uh, end here. We're done. <laughs> I think I'm going to fix me something to eat. I think that's what it is. I'm running out of calories. I haven't. I'm trying to figure out if I ate once or twice today. I can't remember yet. I'm on a different eating schedule than everybody else. So I eat at weird times because I'm up all night. So we're going to go ahead and end here. Thank you all. Uh, Darcy saying love that they are great. I love that newspaper fabric. Yes. And I love that it's got um, like the crosswords and uh, advertisements, ads, like the advertisements of uh, like job advertisements. Then they've got market things on sale. It's a combination of all the stuff you'd find in a... Um, <laughs> Eric talking about if you can't remember if you ate once or twice, maybe you didn't eat at all. I did eat, I know I ate once, I can't remember if I ate the twice. I'm sorry. Um, I know I ate once, I can't remember if I ate twice, and I know I didn't eat the third meal for sure. So I'm just gonna go make me something real quick. I got some broccoli I already cooked, so maybe I'll eat that. Thank you, Asad. <laughs> and so we're going to go ahead and end here, everybody. You stay safe. Be blessed. And quilt out, everybody. Make sure that um, you come back on Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time for our sewing chat. I'll do the birthdays there. Until then, stay safe. Oh, Peggy saying she just came in late. I think the exploding store pattern would be a good for T quilt along. And maybe I will do something like that. And maybe just uh, for people that buy it, we can do like Zoom meetings on it or something like that where we do an hour or two. Because I normally teach that as a workshop. 
So maybe that'll be a great workshop thing where we'll do a few hours at the beginning and then we'll um, come back at different parts to come back and do the next part. So that's a good idea, Peggy. Bye, y'all. <laughs>